Good morning. I'm Coach Mack. Welcome to Braid for our youth ministry. Today we're going to be talking that uh, we're still in the lesson. The lesson that we're doing today is still uh, the title Young Men, Time to Step Up and Fight Back. Last time we talked about spiritual warfare. Now we're going to talk about responsibility. You're the young person, being the young man, being and becoming responsible for your conduct, and responsible for your life, responsible for your soul, and other areas. But first we're going to have a prayer. Lord Jesus, I pray for each and every one that's watching this video right now. God, that you would touch their heart in a special way. I pray, Lord Jesus, that they would be blessed by the video. And I pray, God, I pray that their faith, Lord, Lord, and you shall be increased. And Lord, if there's anyone watching the video who have not made a commitment to Jesus Christ, I'm going to read this scripture for them, Lord, so they have the invitation. If anyone out there, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, here's your opportunity. Romans chapter, nine, Romans chapter 10, verse 9, are the two scriptures I'm going to read. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you have to first confess Jesus Christ. You have to believe, and you have to believe that Jesus Christ can save you. Verse 10 says, For the heart, for with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto right salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. So, I want to just lead you into a little prayer. If you, if you decide that this is time, then you're ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross and rose the third day. I believe that you are the Son of God. I do believe, Jesus, that you can save my soul. Now, I'm asking you, Jesus, to come in my life and be the Savior of my life. I ask you to forgive me for every sin. Come into my life and save me my life. And Lord Jesus, I confess right now by faith that you have come into my life, that you have cleaned me up, and now I confess, Jesus, that I am saved. I confess that I am now a, a part of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. If you decided to make that important step today, I want to, you made the most important step you probably ever make in your life, giving your life to Jesus Christ. And I suggest that you uh, seek God and find a local assembly to go to where you can learn more about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Now we're going to go into uh, an area, young people, that you need to be very cognizant of, and that is respons being responsible. That is being responsible. Responsible means to answer for one's conduct and obligations. That means you. That means you. You are responsible for your conduct. Whether your conduct is good, bad, medium, whatever, you're responsible for it. Not anyone else. Your conduct and your obligations. Obligations that you have as a young man. And your liability to legal review. In other words. Responsibility, you have to give some accountability for the things you do and for the things you fail to do. You give accountability for your conduct, give a, you know, you give accountability for the obligation that you have that you fail to uh, do right in. So we're going to go on. You're responsible for your conduct. You're the one that must make, take the necessary actions to improve in any area of life. You're the one. Don't expect anyone to lead the charge in helping you to better your life. You are responsible for living a disciplined life. Jesus opened the door to salvation. You are responsible for your decision. Whether you receive salvation or whether you reject, reject salvation, you're responsible to make that decision. If you want a better life, you're responsible for taking the actions that can help you achieve this. The idea that people owe you is very childish and misleading. Get up and be responsible, young people. Take 
responsibility for your actions. Take responsibility for your career. Get out, get, get off, get off your uh, back and go and start doing something with your life. Don't expect people to do for you what you can do for yourself. Take initiative. Let's talk about procrastination. Procrastination means to put off intentionally and habitually something that needs to be done. This can be because the task you ha have to do is either challenging, you don't value the task, or you just might fit the category of being a lazy and slowful person. See, it's easy for all of us to look out and find faults in others, but what about what we are facing in the mirror? We must all look into the mirror, young people, and look into the mirror and see where you're at, and then God can help you before you can help someone else. It's very important that we grasp on to being responsible. You may have been used to mom and dad doing all the things for you in your life, but now it's time in your life to be responsible. And the age of 20 and 27 is the age group that's recognized all through the country as being our young people having tremendous problems, making bad decisions, trouble with the law, be it drugs, be it alcohol, you, you name it. But the one area that we have not gotten better in is being gay representative for Jesus Christ. My lessons are done to help young people get better, not to judge your life, but simply to point you in the right direction. We have enough judges. I simply want to help you, give you some food for thought that can help you along. Now, what we're going to look at here, we're going to look at something that's very important. We, we were talking about procrastinating, okay? Slowfulness, laziness. It's sad to say that a lot of our young people are in fact not motivated. You're expecting other people to do things for you. Some of you want to just stay home and, and live with mom and dad the rest of your life. As long as they give you the opportunity to do so, you're not willing to get up and become responsible. At, at a certain age, my son was 20, at a certain age, one of my son, my oldest son, I, one day I told him it was time for him to leave home and begin to stand on the own two feet. It wasn't very easy for him to do it, but I was not going to allow him back in my home because it was time for him to get out as a young man and get on his own. And so, a lot of you young men, you are hesitant yourself to get out on your own. You want to live with a mother, you want to live with a father, you want everyone else doing things for you. Maybe you are in the category of being lazy. But here's some scriptures that the Bible speak up and probably have talked about that pertain to a slowful and lazy person. In Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 says, The sluggard, the sluggard represents a lazy person, one that's not willing to take initiative to do things for himself. Proverbs, 20, 20 verse, 20, Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. The slugger said, I can't work because it's cold. Therefore, he bathes in harvest and have none. He's lazy, he makes excuses, and he only ends up doing it, begging other people because you don't want to go to work. Proverbs 21 and 25 says, the desire of the slowful, one that's, that's, that's slow to take action, a lazy one, kill him. He has desire to get this, to get this, to get that, for his hands refuse to labor. He wants this. He has so many desires that the lazy man, the sloper man, has so many desires, but it eats him up because he will not use his hand to do any work. Proverbs 12 and 24 says, the hand of the diligent, that's the young man that's willing to get out there and work, that's willing to take an initiative, not willing to make excuses, not look for everyone else to help him out, do everything for him. It said, the hand of the diligent shall, shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under the tribute. A, slow, a young man, if you're slothful, lazy, don't want to work, you will always be behind the power curve. You will be the one that's, that's wishing. You will be the one that's, that, that's lacking. You will be the one that's can, that will get in debt. You will be the one that's staying in debt. You will be the one that's always behind the power curve because you fail to put your hand to something. You fail to take initiative and begin to take action 
to build your life. Proverbs 20 13 says, Love not sleep, lest they come to poverty. Because of your slowness, young man, you can become one that poverty stricken. It says, Open your eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with, with, with bread. In other words, it's just like when you wake up in the morning time and it's morning and time to get up and you, you decide to stay in the bed instead of go out and look for a job or do other things that you that you plan to do. You instead you love to sleep. You like you love sleep, you love to rest, and you put all these things before getting out and doing the thing that you, you call to do. Procrastinating, slowfulness, it will get you nowhere fast. Proverbs 10 and 5 says, He that gathers in the summer is a wise son. Now I'm going to talk about a son. I want you to think about yourself, young man, as a son. What kind of son are you? But he that sleepeth in, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that calls shame. Now in other words, if you're the kind of son that you, you, you're not motivated, you don't want to work, you're trying to live on your mother, you rather steal, don't work, you rather try to give other people to work, then you can only bring shame to your family. You bring shame to your family name, you bring shame to everyone, and that's what the scripture is saying. Okay. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4, however, says, talk about the poor. It says, He becomes poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent make rich. In other words, young man, you need to work. You need, to, you need to work, you need to take initiative. If you've been living in your mother's house all these years and just not doing anything, you need to get up and start doing some work. The bottom line is you may be lazy. And it's not all, it, it, maybe some of the parents are responsible for allowing you to, to be lazy and live with them all these years, and maybe they call, they, maybe there's some injustice because of it. But at the end of the day, young man, you are a young man, you're responsible, if you're able, but able to work, you need to be out working. You need to be doing things for yourself. You need to get from under your family care. Now it's time for you to branch out and be a young man. To be responsible. Take charge of your own life. Stop procrastinating. Stop being slothful. You want to gain respect from your family members and people outside? Let them see you put your hand to something. Let them see you working. Let them see you laboring. Let them see you taking initiative to better your life. And that's where you get your respect. May God bless you.